Today, I want to start with something really, really simple. I want to focus on something, and the important information is to, to remember from, for this talk is that you, everyone in this room can do something for a better accessibility for everyone. And one of the first things you can do is to consider how you will manage focus, visibility of the focus. If you are um, a low vision user, or if you are someone with a motor disability, you may rely on the keyboard to navigate in the interface of your computer, but also on the browser. And the very important point is to be able to see where you are. And it's even more important when we know have a compl very complex interface with a lot of interactions. So it's really, really something that need to be considered during the design. Most of the time when I get a, a design from, uh, from a designer, the design of the focus is missing. And when I get uh, a design system, most of the time the design system don't include the state for the focus. So it's something that needs to be considered from the beginning, and it's really easy in terms of CSS to, uh, to correctly implement this. So, I think everyone knows this. You have the pseudo selector for the focus, and then you have the outline property to, to visually design the, fo the focus visibility. So I will just give you some uh, examples. So here I have, I have four different kinds of uh, examples. The first one is the native focus. You don't have to do anything. By default, in the browser, depending on the browser, there, there will be a visible focus. So by default, I am using Chrome. So here, I have the blue uh, native focus when I use my keyboard to navigate. And then we have what I call the invisible outline. Nobody wants to do that uh, as a goal, because in fact, most of the time, what happens is that you use a reset CSS. And when you do that, most of the time, the reset CSS removes the default uh, style of the outline, and you just forgot to add it back. So by default, without knowing, you create a huge barrier for people with disabilities that need to be able to see the focus. The other case you may face is working with some designers that uh, want to remove it, because in some case, when you click on the, on the button, you will see the focus effect. So for example, here you see, you see that there is an uh, outline appearing when I click with my mouse. So the, the design may ask to remove it. But the good thing is that you can uh, avoid that either for the moment by using JavaScript or in the next or close future, uh, you will be able to, do, to, be, to use the focus visible property. For the moment, this is not well supported. It's behind flag uh, in Chrome, but we hope that maybe uh, next year uh, you will be able to do it in, uh, in production. And also the great stuff is that you can improve the default focus. So it's same thing, quite easy. For here, for example, you see that I've, I've changed default design of the focus, and I increase the visibility. I increase the offset uh, for the text, so the, the border of the outline is not that close from uh, the, the letters, so it's better to be able to read the word. And uh, uh, also what you need to consider is the design and the, the contrast ratio of the, of the focus itself. So this is really simple, but this is something that you really, really need to, uh, to consider when you are doing your, 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 your CSS uh, or your JavaScript if you use the, the version where you need JavaScript. The second point is something also quite easy, and you may already know of it, but I see a lot of people failing with this. Is all you need to manage uh, something that is hidden on the screen. So in some case, in some situation, you want just to hide something, and it needs to be hidden for everyone, including people using a screen reader, for example. 
If you look at, uh, I don't know, a, a drop-down navigation, when you click on the, on the menu, it opens the, the sub-menu. In that case, you don't want the screen reader to be able to read the sub-menu if it's not visible on the screen. So in that case, yes, you will be able to use regular uh, property to hide content like uh, display none. But in some cases, you also need to hide something visually, but let the screen reader be able to read it. For example, uh, that is, this can be uh, if you have an icon and you need to have a text for this icon, like saying like menu or I don't know, a, a navigation or anything, and you don't want to have the word visible on the screen, but this word still need to be readable by a screen reader. And there is various techniques to, to do that, but there is like only few ones that are really well supported and, and then you can use. So I will give you an example. So here, um, what you have is a, a first uh, paragraph that is hidden visually over here, and, and it's hidden using display none. And the second is hidden, hidden using visibility hidden. The third one is hidden using opacity zero, and the last one is hidden using SR only class. The SR only class, as I say, is a bunch of, of different properties in CSS that will result the content to be hidden visually but remain readable by the screen reader. And also what, uh, what happens is if you use visibility uh, hidden or display none, in fact, even if you have a link inside the content that is hidden, it will not be reachable by the keyboard. So for example, here, you see that everything from the beginning is skipped, and then I directly go to the content that is hidden using SR only, and then I have a specific class to make the content visible again when the focus is on the link, the link inside the part that is hidden. Um, one use case of this can be, uh, typ typically we will have uh, like carousel on some home page, and when you have one slide visible and then the other one are, are, are hidden, you don't want the, the focus to be, the, you don't want the user that, that the user that uses the focus uh, be able to go to the next or to preview slide because they are not visible on the screen. And you don't want to force the user to read everything with the screen reader because not everything is visible. So there is no reason that the, the, the hidden slides to be read in a screen reader or to be reachable with the keyboard. So to do that, you will be able to use display none, but the problem we will, you will have is now to be able to do a transition, because most of the time you will have a transition between, between the, the next and the previous slides, like a, a, an opacity or animation. So you may have to use visibility hidden, so by default, the previous and the next slide will be visi visibility hidden, and then you do the transition, you change the state to visible, visible, visibility visible, you do the transition with the animation, and then when the transition is finished, you put back the visibility hidden uh, to ensure that nothing will be readable or reach up, reachable by the keyboard. Uh, this is very important also because uh, when you use a, sc a screen reader and when you use a keyboard, most of the time, the more complex is a page, the more it's difficult to, for the user to interact, it, interact with it or to understand the content. So if you can reduce the number of tabulation or the number of uh, content that will be read by the screen reader, it will be easier to, the page, the page will be easier to, to understand. And also, for the uh, part that need to be read by the screen reader, so everything need to be re uh, hidden using the, the SR only class, as I say. Um, it's because, for example, if you have a button and you don't put any content in this button, the screen reader will just announce that there is a button, but the user will not be able to know what is this button. So if you do, for example, an icon, a SVG icon, or a background image, then you integrate it with CSS as a background image. The button itself has no name. There is no value that the screen reader will be able to use and restitute to the users. So that's why you always need to have, every time you have a link uh, or a button, you need to ensure that there is text inside. And if you need to hide it, use a Serenity class to let the user know that there is something in the button. Second, so the third point is 
always use semantics. Everyone knows this, I suppose, in this room, but this is really important because the screen reader will use these semantics to announce the nature of the element to the users. For example, if you, uh, if you have an uh, H1, it will be announced as a header. If you have a button, it will be announced as a button. If you use a link, it will be announced as a link, an image as an image. So the semantic is really important. But there is an issue currently in some uh, browsers and screen readers. If you use the display contents uh, property in CSS, it will remove everything, including the style and including the semantic semantics for the screen readers. So we'll just do a quick demo. You have some markups uh, with H1, a list, uh, and a button. And then I have made uh, make a CSS to use display contents, as I say. And I will now turn on my screen reader. I'm a good front end developer. I use semantic markup for everything. Bullet, paragraph, bullet, list, bullet, even data tape. And I only use real button for JavaScript clickable element. You are currently on a text element inside a frame. Voice over off. So if you are not used to a screen reader, it looks fine. But in fact, all the elements, all the semantic has been re removed and, and no semantic has been announced. There is no H1 that has been announced. There is no list that has been announced. The button itself is read as a text and not as a button. So it's really, <laughs> if you do that, it will make the the content readable, the content will still be readable by the screen reader, but the loss of every semantic on the page will make the page really difficult to interact with because the user will not know where something is clickable, where something can be uh, uh, used as a uh, heading because the heading helps the screen reader to uh, navigate on, in the page. So this is really, really important to avoid for the moment to use this, this property in, uh, in CSS. Order of the content is really important. With CSS, you can change visually the order the way you want. There is multiple properties to change the display and move something to the right, to the left, depending uh, uh, of the property you will use. But at the same time, the source code will stay the same. And what is used for the moment by the screen reader is the source code. So if you use a property like order or, or position absolute or flex direction, the, it will be devastating for, for the screen reader because the screen reader will keep the reading order of the source code and then it will be difficult to understand the content. The last one. Don't go crazy with animation. I know that CSS animation is fantastic, but it also can be very difficult for people with vestibular disorder to look at something that is moving every, every time, and, and it can be confusing also for people with uh, uh, attention disorder to concentrate on the page and to be able to read it if there is something moving. So it don't, not, it don't mean that you can't use animation, CSS or even JavaScript animation, you can use it. But you need to follow some rules. And also, there is a possibility in CSS to uh, consider the user. And if the user has declared that he wants something with what we call reduced motion, um, in that case, in your CSS, you can use a media, care, media query. So this is a media query preferred reduced motion to either reduce the motion or to remove every animation for the page. So here, for example, I have a page using a, a, it's a library to do some animation, a scrolling animation uh, with, with a CSS. So there is different kind of animation. So if I want to remove this, uh, I can do a, a media query to, uh, and then with this CSS, if I turn on uh, a feature that declares that I want to reduce motion. That's what I've just done on the settings of the OS. And then go back to the page. You will see that there is no more animation on the, on the page. So you have just done a bit of CSS. And also, you can detect it with JavaScript. But you have just done a bit of CSS, an extra CSS, to remove all the animation. You can keep it by default. 
And if the user are explicitly say that you don't want your fancy, fancy animation, you can have the version of the website without, without any animation. So that's it for me. But I want, what I want you to remember for this talk is that I'm pretty sure that you know, you already know all the properties that I've shown, outline or, or anything, but you need to start looking at it and consider the impact it can have. And if you already know everything I've said today, what I want is that you also discuss about that with your peers in, the, in your team, because if you know it, not everyone knows it. And when I, we do audit, everything I show today is like I, I face, I, I encounter the such thing, like 90% of the website have such kind of issues. So it's really something that is really common, and I hope that in your next project, you will be able to implement either the outline, either the uh, reduced motion, and let the user access every content. Thank you very much.